This is the third video on frequency response and here we're going to focus on a topic called margins. Gain and phase depend on frequency but you're going to ask the question so what? So we've shown that we can plot these in a bow diagram and sketch them and we've introduced the additive property um, but why is this useful? Here we're going to illustrate how closed loop behaviour is strongly linked to open loop bowed diagrams. So that's the key thing. Closed loop behaviour and open loop bowed diagrams are linked. So the bowed diagrams are going to be useful. Once we understand what a good bowed diagram looks like, that is one which implies, you notice the word implies, not guarantees, good closed loop behaviour, we can design systematically and choose compensators to modify the bowed diagram to make it look like one which we expect to be good. So here's a very simple example. You can see I've got a number of different bow diagrams on the left and over here we've got the closed loop. That's the key thing. We've got the closed loop responses. All right. So what have we done? We've simply changed the gain. m equals 1, m equals 2, m equals 4 and so on. And you can see here on the gain diagram that clearly as we change the gain the bow gain diagram has moved up but the phase is not changed. Now if I look at those closed loop responses you'll see this one here which corresponds to m equals 1. Well, yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. This one here that corresponds to m equals 2. Yeah, not too bad, I might live with that. It's not perfect but it's okay. What about this one here that corresponds to m equals 4? Well, it's beginning to be a bit too oscillatory and I'm probably not that happy. And the bigger m's, I'm really not happy. Now, Let's look at the bow diagram. And you can see, as the gain gets bigger, the damping's getting worse. But how can I see that from the gain plot? Well, these are the key values. You'll see that distance that I've just marked with the double arrow. And that comes from this blue gain plot, which corresponds to m equals 1. And you can see this double-sided arrow is large. Now, let's go to the purple. The purple line. Okay, and the purple line is this one here. Okay, so there's the purple line, which is very underdamped. And now you can see the corresponding double sided arrow is small. Okay, and because it's small, it means we've got low damping and poor behavior. Now I've not defined this precisely, but it's just an illustration of how I can look on the bow diagram and I can very quickly infer what I expect to see in the closed loop behavior. So why is this? Closed loop poles are defined from 1 plus gk equals 0 or gk equals minus 1. And hence the key point, the value minus 1 is very significant. Now, if I can solve g of j omega k equals minus 1, what it's telling me is that one of my closed loop poles is on the imaginary axis. In other words, I've got oscillatory modes in my closed loop behaviour. So that is very, very bad. So I do not want to be able to solve g of j, k, g of j, of j omega k equals minus 1. Now, how do I recognise minus 1 in the bow diagram? Well, minus 1 implies 0 decibels and 180 degrees. So we need to look carefully at the bow diagram where it's 0 decibels and or 180 degrees. And we certainly don't want the bow diagram to be overlapping at those two points. Margins then, so we're going to use these things called margins. Begin with the gain margin. So the gain margin is the multiplicative factor or multiplicative scaling needed so that the frequency response passes through minus one. In other words, so simultaneously we're at minus 180 degrees and zero decibels. So does there exist a scaling to make us go through minus one? Phase margin is similar. Does there exist a clockwise phase rotation so that the frequency response passes through minus one? Now these are called margins because basically it's how far away am I from minus one? So what's my margin of safety? Here's an example of how those margins might be calculated. So you can see here I've demonstrated the gain margin. What I've done is I've started from 
minus 180 degrees, and I've said what multiplicative scaling will get me to zero decibels at that frequency. And you can see this solid line here tells you that if I move the bow plot up here by 32 decibels, it will become zero decibels. So my gain margin is 32 decibels that's marked up here. OK, so that's how much scaling um, slack I've got, if you like. What about the phase margin? With the phase margin, we start at zero decibels and we ask ourselves, how much phase rotation do I need to get to minus 180 degrees? And here you can see that the phase rotation is 84 degrees. And so that is your phase margin. We also need to understand this concept of crossover frequencies. Now, hopefully, when you look at a bow diagram, it's fairly obvious what they are. So the gain crossover frequency comes from the gain plot. And it's essentially, where does the gain cross zero decibels? Hopefully, you look at the definition and say, oh, that's sort of obvious. So the gain crossover frequency, where does the gain plot cross the zero decibel line? OK, so there it is. And similarly, we've got this concept of the phase crossover frequency. And this is where does the phase diagram cross the minus 180 degree line. So those two frequencies are very, very important in bow plots. And you'll notice um, in MATLAB, it gives you these vertical lines which show you exactly where those frequencies are because they're so important. If you want those vertical lines, you need to use the command margin G. So estimate margins and crossover frequencies from the following bode. So I'll start with the gain crossover frequency. Here is the zero decibel line. So here is the gain crossover frequency. And I get the phase margin from there. OK, so I run that line down until I intercept the phase. And then what I do is I say, how far above the minus 180 degree line am I? And there is your phase margin. So in this case, <coughs> it's probably 60, 70 degrees, probably 70. OK, now what about the phase margin? Sorry, the uh, gain margin. So first I look for the phase crossover frequency. So that's here. Where does the phase cross? the minus 180 degree line, and then run that up until it intercept the gain plot. And then the gain margin, how much do I need to lift the gain plot in order to get to zero dBs at that frequency? So here you can see the main gain margin is about 10 decibels. Second example, we can do this uh, a bit quicker. So what can you see? Here is the gain crossover frequency. Run that down. Or is this the same example? Something gone wrong. I think this is the same example. I do apologise. Right, so relative stability. How stable are we? A measure of stability is needed. And this is summarised as the further from minus one the frequency plot goes, the more stable we are. Now, there's no generic proof of this statement, but experience for many years and many people has shown it's generally true. But you do have a trade-off, this trade-off here, stability versus performance. If your margins are too large, if you're too far from minus one, it's quite possible that you've got low gain and therefore a slow closed-loop response. Small margins could imply a high gain and underdamping, but a fast response. OK, and so you need to find a balance. So you don't want the margins to be as big as possible, but you need the margins to be big enough. Now, some observations. The phase margin must be positive or the system is closed loop unstable. I'm not going to prove that, but that's generally well recognised. However, what about the gain margin? The gain margin in decibels is usually positive but not necessarily. There are cases where you may have a negative gain margin and still be closed loop stable. So if you want to be closed loop stable, the phase margin must be positive. The gain margin, not necessarily so. Now, for most real systems, you cannot, and this is really important, you cannot 
compute the gain margin and the phase margin analytically on pen and paper. There are some examples where you can, but they're fairly rare. For the vast majority, it's just too difficult to do on pen and paper. So in general, you need numerical methods or to estimate them from the Bode diagram. Now, some approximate guidelines that you can use in design. The gain margin should be at least. Notice the words I've said there, at least. It doesn't mean it's a problem if it's not three. It might be six, it might be ten, it might be three thousand. But what you don't want it to be is less than three. Now that's the gain margin, so it's a one-way sort of criteria. The phase margin's a bit different. The phase margin, you'll see we've said it should be around 60 degrees. And that was a bit of a vague statement. But in other words, we want it to be not too big and not too small. OK, exactly what you need does depend a little on the system, but somewhere around 60 degrees is usually about right. You'll notice these are not prescriptive, they're start points. So simple gain design using frequency response tools. We've only got one degree of freedom with a simple gain design, that is the gain. OK, so we can only meet one specification. So normally what people do is they say, if I've only got gain to play with, I'm going to try and get a desired phase margin. OK, so one criteria which you will try and meet. Now, there is a, a link between phase margin and damping ratio, and that's where this 60 degrees comes from. But if you're roughly 60 degrees, then you expect your damping ratio to be a good one. OK, but you'll notice you now have no control over the corresponding speed of response, bandwidth or low frequency gain. You're only controlling one criteria. So how does a simple gain design work using a phase margin criteria? It's straightforward for most systems to achieve a phase margin in the region of 60 degrees simply by changing the loop gain. OK, now I said most systems, there are some exceptions, but most stable systems, it's not a problem. And you can easily get the required gain from a boat diagram, in seconds, in fact, as we will show. Essentially, you enforce the desired, or if you see what I've put here, required gain crossover frequency by a suitable factor. So how do you do that? You'll see we've got some, some steps here which you can use. If we're going to use here a desired phase margin of 60 degrees for convenience, it doesn't have to be 60, but... Um, Let's assume it's 60, in which case we draw a horizontal line through the phase equals minus 120. And the reason for that is because minus 120 is 60 degrees away from the minus 180 degree line. So we draw a horizontal line through minus 120. We then draw a vertical line to find the corresponding gain at that particular frequency. And then we scale the system by that gain to make sure that the gain plot goes through zero decibels at that frequency. And you will now have the desired phase margin. This will be clearer when we show you using a Bode diagram. So here's the Bode diagram. First of all, draw a horizontal line through a phase minus 120. So minus 120 is going to be about here. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line at minus 120. And notice, why have we chosen that? Because it's 60 degrees from 180 and we want a phase margin of 180. So there we go. There's our first step. Draw okay, a horizontal line at minus 120. Now, you can see the required gain crossover frequency. So remember, the phase margin is calculated at the gain crossover frequency. So what you're saying is that this frequency must be the gain crossover frequency. So now what I've got to do is run a vertical line up at that frequency and I've got to make this point here, I've got to move this to zero decibels. Okay, so I've got to move that point to zero decibels. So you can see if I move it down by A, then I will get zero decibels. I've enforced the required gain crossover frequency to make sure 60 degrees is my phase margin. So here's a similar question. 
what gain will give a phase margin of 45? Now, if you notice, 180 minus 45 is 135. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a horizontal line through minus 135, because that gives me my desired phase margin of 45 degrees. And that tells me that this has to be the gain crossover frequency. So I now run up my gain crossover frequency till I get to the gain plot, which is there, and I find the corresponding gain is roughly 25 decibels. So in other words, I need my K to be minus 25 decibels in order to move that plot down to the zero decibel line, and then I will get the required 45 degrees. And you'll see you've done that very, very quickly, almost by inspection, using this bowed diagram. So what phase margin will give a gain of 4? OK. No, sorry, read that again. What phase margin will a gain of 4 give? So a gain of 4 is 12 decibels. So what that's going to do is it's going to move this gain plot up by 12 decibels. But there's actually an easier way to do this. Rather than moving the gain plot up, you can move these ticks down. So I'm now instead going to take this point minus 12 and draw a line across here at minus 12. So in other words, that distance there is 12. So if I move the blue plot up by 12 decibels, then this will become your gain crossover frequency. So now I can take that down and I can see what the phase is. The phase is about minus 225, and so therefore your phase margin is minus 45 degrees. The minus because it's below the 180 degree line. What about gain selection using CESO tool? So CESO tool is designed to allow simple interactive design. And a simple gain design can be achieved very, very quickly by dragging the bow plot up and down until you get the desired phase margin. So I'm going to show that here and you'll see how easy it is. Um, we're going to do it on this particular system here. Now I've, I've preempted the system to save a bit of time. So here's CISO tool. The system's on there. And what I'm going to show you, you can see the phase margin is currently 45 degrees. You'll see it's marked here with this vertical brown line. Now I can put the mouse over the game plot and then left click and you see I've got a fist. And if I drag it down with this fist using the mouse, can you see the phase margin is changing, it's changing, it's changing, it's changing. And now I've got it to 61.9 degrees. That's not exactly correct. I said I wanted 60, so let's just edit the compensator. I'll bring the compensator window across so we can see. So currently, the compensator's at 0.469, which is a bit too small. Let's try 0.48. And then you see the phase margin's gone down. Let's try 0 0.5. And now you see the phase margin's getting closer to 60. Not exactly 60, but you can very easily, if you need to, you can fiddle around here if you want it to be a bit more precise. But in practice, that's close enough. Um, but you can see the key point. I can grab this game plot and I can move it up and down and I can basically get the phase margin that I want. OK, so a very useful design tool. So some conclusions. We've introduced the concept of gain and phase margins. We've introduced definitions of gain and phase crossover frequencies and shown how margins and crossover frequencies can be used in design. And we've shown how you can easily select a gain to achieve a specified phase margin, assuming, of course, that that is feasible at the outset.